The endoscopic and the nasal approach provides a unique access to the ventral aspect of the skull base. The pituitary gland is located at the center of the skull base and is surrounded by critical neurovascular structures. Above the pituitary gland, we have the optic apparatus. On each side of the gland, we have the carotid arteries, which provide blood flow to the brain. And below the pituitary, we have the brainstem and the basilar artery. Tumors can arise from within the pituitary gland and then grow upwards to compress the optic apparatus, or they can grow to each side to invade the cavernous sinus. There are many other tumors that can arise in this area, above the pituitary gland, below, or inside the cavernous sinus. Here we can see a side view of the patient's head, and we can identify the location of the pituitary gland at the base of the skull and deep into the nasal cavity. Here we can zoom in and see the relationship of the pituitary gland with the sphenoid sinus, again at the deepest point of the sinonasal cavity and at the base of the skull. We are now going to simulate an endoscopic endonasal approach to the pituitary gland and the base of the skull. We use the nostrils as natural corridors to access the skull base. We can actually introduce instruments through each nostril, on one side the endoscope and on the other side dissecting instruments such as micro scissors. With the collaboration of our ENT colleagues, we proceed with opening of the sphenoid sinus. This gives us access to the posterior wall of the sphenoid sinus where we can identify the prominence of the pituitary gland, carotid arteries, cavernous sinus, and optic nerves. Here we can see the location of the endoscope inside the sphenoid sinus and the close-up view it provides. We use a high-speed drill to carefully remove the bone that covers the pituitary gland. We continue drilling laterally to perform a wide exposure into the anterior wall of the cavernous sinus on each side of the pituitary gland. We perform this XL technique where very thin bone is left behind so we can use a kerosene ranger to remove it safely and entirely. After the dura has been widely exposed, we perform our cruciate dural opening. We use micro scissors to open the dura in a cruciate fashion up to the level of the medial wall of the cavernous sinus. After widely opening the dura, we start identifying the difference between the pituitary gland, which looks well vascularized and more orange-like, from the pituitary tumor, which is less vascularized and more whitish or pale in appearance. By identifying this interface between both the pituitary gland and the tumor, we can develop an accurate plan of dissection to separate the tumor away from the pituitary gland. Whenever possible, we aim to perform an extracapsular dissection of the tumor to accurately separate it from the pituitary gland. In certain cases, tumors invade the medial wall of the cavernous sinus, and this poses a special challenge. For this, we have developed an original technique which consists in opening the anterior wall of the cavernous sinus to directly access the inside of the cavernous sinus and remove the medial wall. By directly opening the anterior wall of the cavernous sinus, we can identify the carotid artery in the cavernous sinus, the inferior hypophysial artery running towards the posterior as well as the pituitary gland, and we can gently separate the medial wall that contains tumor from the cavernous carotid artery. The medial wall of the cavernous sinus can be removed and blocked by performing the disconnection of the carotidoclinal ligament superiorly and the disconnection from the dural floor inferiorly. During this process, it is important to identify and typically coagulate and transect the inferior hypophysial artery. At the end, we can achieve a complete tumor resection, including a complete removal of the middle wall of the cavernous sinus, which makes significant difference in patients' outcome, especially for functional pituitary tumors. As a conclusion, the endoscopic and the nasal approach allows us to perform complete tumor removal with excellent preservation of the pituitary gland function secondary to the superior visualization provided by the endoscope.